All right, quiet on set, boys. G'day. <laughs> you, all right, we'll just keep rolling. That's the intro. Anyway, we're interviewing Jody McKay, who's the opposition leader of New South Wales. Enjoy. Well, as usual, this is just going to be like a really informal introduction because we'll probably just film something anyway at, at the end of it. So, like, I guess we'll just get into it. But, but. Is that your introduction? Yep, that's it. <laughs> right. I think we'll just Can't keep wait that. For the yeah. ending. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's an hour from now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this is a pub with no beer. Great. <laughs> yeah, well, look, I, I just wanted to preface this beforehand. This, this is the opposition leader of New South Wales, by the way, Jodie McKay. So if you're listening in from Queensland or Victoria, you don't have an excuse not to listen to this because it's pretty much just the same cookie cut approaches that they'll be taking in each of these states anyway. But I Are just you saying I'm a cookie cut? No, I'm not saying you're a cookie oh, cut. Oh, right, okay. No, 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 no. You're here. I'm not going to say that. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, right I'm just softening it so we all just understand, and I don't know if the, the friendly Geordie's family understands this yet, but um, I'm not a fan of Gladys Berejiklian. <laughs> and who would be a better person to just attack her for an hour straight and the woman that's just in the bear pit with her day after day. No? You don't want to say anything mean? <laughs> well, that's the end of the interview is then. That the just stopping this. Is that the only question you've got for me? <laughs> These are the things that I wanted to cover in this interview. We probably right. should have talked about this, you know, off camera. But um, the, the things that I really wanted to know is your views on her handling of the bushfires, yeah. her handling of COVID, and I'm particularly interested in the environmental vandalism that has happened under the Liberals. Mm. And so, yeah, like, just fill us in on it. Yeah. There's a lot more than that, though. There's her privatisation pledge that she, uh, you know, that she went against. There's the blood budget blowouts we've had in every major project. There's the fact that she's freezing public sector wages. There's the fact that she won't discipline her ministers when they do the wrong thing. And I could go on and on and on and on and on. But, yeah, she... she <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the opposition that's why you're leader, here. Right? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's No, but right. this is the other thing as well, just, just to preface this. Like, I know that a lot of people are just like, yeah, of course you'd say that, that's your job. So we are going to be putting links at the bottom to put it, because that's the other thing that I think is really important about state politics. There's a lot of power in it. No one seems to understand that. Uh, and it just goes under the radar of the press. But you know why? That's because it's not broadcast, right? So if, you, if you're if you in federal parliament, it's broadcast. State parliament, no one knows. There's a webcast and it doesn't work most of the time. <laughs> so no one knows what's yeah, going on Yeah, I didn't even there. know. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, no one knows. Yeah, well, you wouldn't watch it. You only watch no. TikTok videos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> it's too just long. Just get to the slamming. <laughs> Stop talking about policy. Just be mean. <laughs> so, but you know she's a... Uh, um, Look, let me start. So I start with COVID. Should we yeah. start with COVID? All right. Yeah, that's um, topical. It is really topical. And I think you have to look at what happened with the Ruby Princess. You've got to look at what happened with Newmarch House. You've got to look at the fact that we still don't know how things are opening here and when because there's no roadmap. It's basically just whatever she thinks she wants to open on that day. Uh, is that how it works? I think that's how it's working. No just walk really in the knows. office and like, what are we feeling about churches? No? That's how, that's the... Well, yeah, this is, this is issue. So we've been calling for a roadmap. So, a, a, yeah. so we actually believe that people need to know when things are going to open and why they're opening and how they were open because most of this will be done in a staged approach. But we don't have that from her at all. Every other state has it. Even the ACT has it. Even the Northern Territory <laughs> has it. We the don't have that states, in New yeah. South Wales. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, so, you know, we've been calling for that. And I think as we come out of this recovery, people want certainty. Mm. But, you know, the Ruby Princess was just a... Just, a, sh a shocking situation that she tried to walk away from. I mean, every press conference, she deflected to the chief medical officer or to the health minister or to the police commissioner and refused to answer most questions in relation to the Ruby Princess. And of course, we had 2,700 people that got off that vessel. No one was tested and they went around the country and 22 people died. Well, just that's, that's under her watch. Absolutely. Well, I couldn't agree more. But the other thing is, uh, I, I do need to add this to it, though. Her 
defence of it is that she's not in charge of it and it's a border protection issue. This is the, this is the line that I've been hearing a lot. Yeah, and, she, and, and border protection will come back and say it's a New, New South Wales health issue. And the reason why is that New South Wales health had to give permission for those people to leave the vessel. That wasn't border force, that was New South Wales health. They had to tick a box, they had to say that they were okay to leave without testing. So, you know, it does not hold true that New South Wales Health and therefore she as Premier had nothing to do with this. Right. Absolutely does. And we're going to keep pushing that. There's a special commission of inquiry, which we finally got because there was all this talk about the police commissioner doing an inquiry. And uh, eventually we got this special commission of inquiry, which is terrific. But if you look at Newmarch House, it's the same situation. You know, you should have moved those elderly residents when they were diagnosed with COVID-19 out of that uh, aged care facility and into hospital straight away. Mm. Instead, it spread right throughout that facility and you've got over 20 people that died there as well. That's on her watch. These are her decisions. So she, it is directly her as well. So she can't just pawn this off to other ministers. No. She would be keeping abreast of all of these. Obviously, she would be, right? Well, the thing is, when you're opposition leader and you're the Premier, the buck stops with you. No one yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, it's, this, this happened on her watch. This is, this is her issue. And the same with the bushfires. I mean, you know, the, the cuts that occurred to the Real Fire Service, to National Parks and Wildlife Service, um, you know, those frontline agencies, under her watch. Mm. And we're going to keep pushing that because people need to know um, what this government is about. And my job is not to whinge and whine. My job is to make sure that we hold them to account. And she fibs, Jordan. That's the other issue. She fibbed, misled, lied about the privatisation of further public assets. Mm. She did that on the light rail project, which blew out by $1.3 billion. Um, this is kind of standard behaviour. And, you know, we have to be better in politics. What do you think is going on with all of this, though? Do you, do, you, do you think that there is, like, a criminal element to it or do you think that this is just, like, grossly incompetent? I think it is a wanton disregard for the public interest. I think that's what it is. And I think that she thinks she can just keep getting away with it. Uh, what, what does that mean? <laughs> the word wanton? <laughs> yeah, no, just, yeah, yeah, what does this disregard for the public? It, Explain it, it, it. it basically means that they have no interest in a good outcome for the community. They, they don't care... What are they interested in? Well, I think they're interested in um, the privatisation of public assets. I think they're interested in uh, do you making think that's sure that... Sorry, but like, do you think that that's ideological or do you yeah, think that I this is think, just no, like no, a no, corrupt no. element? No, no, no. I think that's ideological. But I think that, you know, I mean, I, I appeared before ICAC, right? So I was there. I exposed lots of corruption within my own party and uh, within the Liberal Party. There were 10 Liberal MPs that ended up having to resign as a result of that inquiry. So I know corruption. Um, you know, this government, if you look at... For instance, what's happening with the uh, the uh, the rorts, for instance, around the um, what John Barillaro proudly badges as pork barreling, um, <laughs> you know, pork barillaro. <laughs> Why does he wear that as a badge of honour? That's shocking. He does. I he didn't know does. that about him. He does. He wears it as a badge of honour, <laughs> and it's not. He calls himself pork barillaro. I mean, really? Does anyone want to call themselves <laughs> pork barillaro? He wears it as a badge of honour. <laughs> He's taking advice from that midget in Game of Thrones. You know, he just he's done it. And you know what? That's yeah, that's genius on his behalf. It's the first time I'll say something good about Barilaro. He's gonna make the right move on that one. No, but <laughs> under him. Yeah, it's mad. But you get Stuart Ayres, right? Who applies for a grant under a sports program, so a sports grant. And uh, he applies for a convention centre. You've got, and gets the money. You have Andrew Constance, who applies for a swimming pool under an arts grant program and gets the money. How is this allowed to happen? Well, yeah, this is, this is the thing that I, I don't actually know how this is allowed to happen. Obviously, you'd be able to shed more light I wasn't on this. actually asking you. <laughs> yeah, why, why did I even... <laughs> I, wasn't I didn't even understand that was a rhetorical yeah, it question. Was, it's it just was like if, if tree falls in the forest, and I'm just like, yeah, obviously no one hears it. Like I try to answer it. Um, <laughs> so, but like, if you were... note to self, no rhetorical questions. Yeah, yeah. Stop making me look bad. Yeah. <laughs> I would never do that. The, yeah, but like the, the question around that, though, I guess, and I think that it's probably just due to a lack of media oversight. 
But no, it's I don't, more than that. But what do you think it is? I think it's more than that. I, I think it's just the, they've been allowed to get away with this since they came into government and they just think it's okay. I think is that just because they are the government so they write the laws? Is that <clears throat> No, I think it's about... Look, I, I think that you've got to have a, a focus. Every time, when you're in government, when you're in my position, you always think about the type of New South Wales that you would want, the yeah. type of decisions that would get you there, right? Mm. I think that for her, it's all about um, the top in a town uh, benefiting. I think it's about how you make that happen. Uh, I think, uh, and, and as part of that, there's this deception that um, has just become a commonplace within this government. Um, and there's bad behaviour as well, and the Premier lets that happen. I just think we have to be better than what we are right now. And, right. you know, that's that's my job, I guess, to make sure that I put a, a case for a different New South Wales. That's my job. Do you think that Gladys Berejiklian uh, is a competent Premier in what she is trying to dole out? Or do you think that she's actually just above, like, what's the, what's the phrase again? Above her head? Um, anyway. <laughs> she's in it above her head. Is that it? <laughs> Damn, oh, so out of a yeah, out of a dip. That's the one. No, yeah. look, I think I think she's um, I think she's I think she's pretty competent. Like I, I'm not going to bag her competency. I just so think she's just competent at bringing about this mass scale like extinction. She she is trying to do that. She doesn't care about it, Jordan. Okay, okay. That's the issue. She doesn't care. You've got to care about it to actually be able to do something, <laughs> right? right? You've got to care if you. If you don't care about it, you don't make the changes that need to happen and make the mm. state better and to mm. make it better for so many people. I think this I, is I the... Think sorry, you, you it, right. It's the care factor. Yeah. I think this is, like, something that uh, I'd really like to touch on because I just... I, I really want as many people as possible to understand that the reason it's so important to elect state Labor governments, one of the main ones, I think, anyway, is the environmental protection laws. Because it just, it, it just like... I don't know. It's it's that kind of Captain Planet generational criminal stuff where they just go into the future and it's like, the future could look like this or this. And then there's just a dolphin going through the river going, <laughs> <laughs> that's the difference. Like, it's it's so stuck. I remember... Uh, I'm still stuck with a dolphin. <laughs> okay. You like that image, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to that could be your little happy place. <laughs> yeah. You just <laughs> put that dolphin. photo up. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I, I think, look, uh, the, the stat that really sits in my mind is that as soon as the Labor government was unelected, I can't remember when, I think it was 2010 or something? 11. 2011. The amount of land clearing went up by 88-fold. Yeah, they changed the biodiversity. Yeah. Laws. Yeah, shocking, shocking, shocking. So, yeah, would you just be able to canvas between us the, so the difference between a Labor government elected in office and their environmental protection record as opposed to the Liberals? Well, I think you, you just have to look at what we value. Again, I came back to the kind of care factor because we have always, as a party, um, valued the environment, valued national parks and made sure that there was um, a focus on making sure that biodiversity actually mattered in this day, right? Mm, mm. Um, you, you can't just have large-scale development. You can't just have uh, wanton destruction. And that's what we've seen under this government. And, uh, you know, they've put it under the guise of, oh, we're going to make this better for uh, rural communities, for farmers. That's, uh, that's how they've managed to get that through. But, you know, many people in rural and regional New South Wales don't like that. I can tell you, many people in rural and regional New South Wales actually want a government that is responsive to the environment as well as rural communities. And this government doesn't get that either. You know, we should be building national parks. We should actually be valuing our, our biodiversity. We should be protecting our wildlife. The situation out of the bushfires was just so distressing. And it wasn't just koalas she killed. She, you know, there, there were wallabies and kangaroos and wombats. There was, you know, possums. Species um, endangered a, now. a billion, a billion, you know, yeah. that's extraordinary. And no one, even now, we, we found out this week that there is a uh, million dollars that they put up um, for wildlife carers. You know, 400,000 of that has gone to create two bureaucrat positions and uh, only, <laughs> yeah, and about 20,000 has actually gone to help wildlife carers. 20,000. Yeah. So that's, you know, this is their... What this is the is, maths on that? <clears throat> a billion dead animals, 20,000. 
And our wildlife carers did a great job. They really did. But the world was watching us. You know, when you think of Australia, you think of our wildlife. You think yeah. of our natural environment. Yeah. You think of who we are as a country that, you know, you, you, the space of, uh, of, of people coming here and being able to travel, you know, why brown lands? That's what, that's what you think of. I mean, you and I don't think of that, but they think of that. Um, you know, th this government that. hasn't hasn't valued that they they don't actually get that and it's you know it's it's distressing to people like you and it's distressing to people like like me I you know but we've got to get back to having a focus on the environment but we also have to convince people about why that matters when you say that message to people of you know they, they, they you know the, the the level of land clearing is now rivaling third world dictatorships um that, you know, like under Gladys Berejiklian's rule, there's been thousands endangered species put on the endangered species list. And that's on her watch. When you say those things to people, is the response good or are people just like, show, get back <laughs> to George? Um, <laughs> oh, gosh, that's a good question. I think Do people it believe it? That's what I'm saying. No, because when I, I hear it, I like, believe it. exactly. When I say, even when I'm saying mm. it rivals, you know, the Congo in terms of land clearing and stuff like that, mm. it seems unbelievable to me. Mm. No, people, I think, but I think this is why it's important that we talk about it and we let people know exactly what is happening. But that's, that's one issue in a myriad of problems that this government has created. Yeah. And that's the difference between a Liberal and a Labor government. Right. You know, we would abolish those laws. They, it, it, you're right, they came in and they, they changed that straight away and they did it under the guise of we're going to support rural communities. But I can tell you that after the Maybe, bushfire yeah. season, yeah. but after bushfire, people in rural communities care about climate change. They actually believe in climate change. The National Party doesn't think that people in rural communities actually uh, cares about, uh, you know, jobs in renewable energy, that they're only supportive of jobs in the coal industry. They're not. They're absolutely not. And they know that those bushfires were caused by a failure of not just us, but you know, internationally, to actually manage climate change. Right. People so get that. this is that. a weird. Okay. The other thing I'm wondering as well is, what do you think is? Because I'm, I'm imagining that the nationals are just way worse than the liberals, and they are. Like oh the, well, you know. <laughs> really? Can we have them as equal <laughs> in terms of land clearing? Not just in just terms of in land terms clearing. Of... I would just imagine that like a lot of the awful decisions are pushed on by the nationals. This is, this is my understanding of state politics. Do you think that that's what's happening there? That they're kind of like the extreme faction of the federal Liberal Party? I think that there is massive tension between the Liberals and the Nationals. And I think that yeah. there is a struggle all the time for who is in control. And John Barillaro has, I mean, you will uh, remember the tension between he and Matt Keane over climate change yeah. and uh, over coal mining, over setting a renewable energy target. Um, you know, he, he's the guy that wants nuclear energy. You know, he wants to build reactors all over New South Wales. Just, he, just as a tip, don't say that on the net. You'll, <laughs> you'll get. I think everyone will just be sitting there, just being like, uh huh, uh huh. Oh, she said something anti nuclear. That's it. No, I'm not voting for it. Just, just to have shit. But this is the. You've got a lot to learn about Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? That's the first indicator. She doesn't know what it is, but yeah. Just, just, like, uh, uh, just as what a, a quick dice of what I've learned. Yeah, what is Reddit? You don't want to know. Okay. It's just, it's just like, you know, like the idea of an echo chamber. Well, just put that on steroids and you have read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go and look up that in a TikTok video. <laughs> do the TikTok. Just I'm going to do TikTok. Start that is, doing that the is actually one dinner. of the things that I'm going to take from this interview, about, a fact, apart from the fact that, you know, my husband is a great fan of yours and is oh. very impressed that I'm here. Why didn't he buy um, a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> it's like your your friend's daughter that did instead. Yeah, she's got a koala killer shirt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he's not into shirts. Although, <laughs> I tell you what he does do is he wears, he's into, he's got one shirt. He wears an elbow uh, shirt to bed. That's what it, my husband wears to bed, is an elbow shirt. Miss Love so. just did this hand gesture. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean you want an elbow shirt to wear to bed? I think so. There we go. That's it. Yeah. That's, seriously, that's what I sleep with. It's great. Here's the every man. That's the two things I think you should take away from this interview, Jody. Get on TikTok and chug beers. But don't do that on TikTok, otherwise you'll get banned. You can't chug beers. This is a pub with no alcohol. Yeah, that's, that's why right. I brought you here. Is that, is that the reason? Because yeah. I was just, why are we in Parabetta? 
Is that the reason? Because I know that you visited Mount Druitt in Liverpool and I thought you needed to come to Parramatta. Okay, yeah, well, you know what I've Plus, got to say about this. there's one other thing that you need to know about Parramatta. So the Premier has announced that she's actually going to freeze wages, right? So yeah. public, public sector yeah, wages, yeah, yeah. which is effectively a pay cut. But while she's doing that to 400,000 public servants, so taking money off them, she's spending $1.5 billion to move the Powerhouse Museum here to Parramatta and no one wants it. Tell me on more a about land, this. On land that's going to flood and in the meantime she's destroyed <laughs> Destroying, she's destroying uh, an incredible willow grove. Um, uh, it's, it's an old maternity hospital. It's going to be demolished, just like they demolished the Royal Oaks Hotel, a 200-year-old pub last week. Oh, well, you know, we can't have a liberal decision without a bit of possum genocide, can we? <laughs> it, just, it just has to be in there, doesn't it? What's possum genocide got to do with that? Isn't that just, I don't know, I'm just imagining that they live in trees. Look, I'm, I'm not a biologist, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know what they do, actually. Maybe they just wear shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do, tell me more about the powerhouse. I think you're going to tell me more about the pub with no beer. Oh, well, yeah, all right. You can tell me about that if you want. No, no, no. I'll tell you about the powerhouse. No, the powerhouse <laughs> museum is, uh, is in Piermont and they want to move it to Parramatta. And they're spending $1.5 billion uh, doing it and nobody wants it here. Um, Not the locals. No, the locals want to see the heritage precinct here, the uh, old women's factory site. They want to see that um, turned into a, a lovely um, uh, arts, cultural and heritage precinct. It's got yeah. extraordinary Aboriginal history and also early um, female convict history. Mm. It, you could create something quite spectacular here. Because mm. Parramatta is quite historical, incredibly. You yeah, know, yeah. All the, nice family. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but the river, the Parramatta River, you know, all the early colony around um, sprung up around the Parramatta River. Right. So the, huge history here and instead they're demolishing it. There are three heritage buildings they are demolishing in Parramatta. A 200 year old hotel, the Royal Oaks Hotel, shocking. And why are they moving it? It's for property developers, right? Exactly. It's for uh, So they want to sell that site and they want to make money from that site and they want to see a high-rise building on that site in Pierre. And what is their argument for it? They don't say that, do they, of just being like, what would be better than this no, heritage what they say museum? Is that, yeah, no, what they say <laughs> is that Parramatta deserves a, you know, a, a, a museum. But, but there's you better said, ways they've to got do it. it. There are better ways of yeah. doing it. There are so there, there are better ways of doing it and getting an outcome. I mean, when you come to this country, we spoke about um, the importance of uh, of recognizing our wildlife and our our natural environment. But when you come to this country, how do you learn about our Aboriginal history? How would you learn about it? I don't know the citizenship test. How do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> you, you, but you don't. Oh, you right? don't. Right. Like That's you the whole don't. Answer. Sorry, it's another return. <laughs> another return. <laughs> she stops slipping me off with this. <laughs> Why are you giving me a gotcha you interview? You just don't. <laughs> <laughs> Note to Jordan: You don't have to answer every question. <laughs> right, yeah, we'll just glide on. But how do you? How do you? How do you learn about our? You know, and it's reconciliation week. How do you learn about that? You can't in this country. You didn't answer it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> you can't in this country because we don't. We don't actually tell that story, and we should. So, um, you know, that's something I feel quite passionate about as well. Right. Okay. Now, just give me, uh, in honour of the fact that BuzzFeed is finally put to the grave in this country, give me your like top five worst things the New South Wales government has done, in your opinion. What? Sorry, you didn't understand that. <laughs> 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 but your say husband would it, know exactly what I said. Say it slowly. Top five worst things the New South Wales government has done, in your opinion. Well, and I'm counting them off. You're counting them. <laughs> uh, None of this slipping in six nonsense. Yeah, okay, so land clear, you mentioned the. So you think land clearing is number one I, of them? I, it, I won't say it's number one, but I do think that it's. Uh, I know you think it's number one. No, 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 but it's just but like, it it's, it's insane that there is something worse that this government is doing than just treating this like it's a giant diamond mine in the middle of Central Africa. That they're just like on, sorry, it's just like, I can't get I know, over that. I know, Third I... world countries are doing a better job of protecting the environment. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> just, so, yeah so, so let's just I'm, say yeah. environmental destruction, right? Let's just 
Let's, okay, just, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. just say that. I think, you know, up there is the absolute, um, the waste of money. You know, they have privatised um, so many of our public assets. They've sold the ports, they've privatised electricity, they've sold the land titles office. Uh, and uh, we have had $13 billion in, in wasted money. So that's blowout in projects, $13 billion. And I know that, well, I know I'm what you think of the light rail project as well. But $1.3 billion over in that project. I think, I think that is, uh, it is up there for me because that is not being fiscally responsible. It's not actually acknowledging that there needs to be money spent in schools and hospitals and a whole range of other uh, um, social infrastructure. It is insane to me that they are always able to keep up this visage. No matter, no matter how, like, if you're talking about federal government, the fact that there was just, like, a $60 billion black hole recently, like, an accounting error of $60 billion, that mm. the government that can't count is known as the government of strong economic management. And it's the same in New South Wales. I don't know if this is the case still, but I was just reading... This was, this was an article from, I think, maybe 2019, but there was zero growth in New South Wales, and they still hold up this image of being these incredible yeah. economic managers. This is, and you know what, this is, um, this is a constant source of frustration for me, yeah. because we went into COVID, and we are in the situation we are in right now, because they have failed to manage the budget, and everyone, and they just keep getting yeah. away with uh, this sort of false narrative on how great they are are as budget managers, but they're not. You know, we have had, I, I mentioned the sale of public assets. And remember, she said she would not privatise any more public assets. What she's privatising right now is public buses, so that public buses will not exist in New South Wales. Where? Um, that's, what, that's, that's what she's on about now. Um, I don't think our water is safe. I think this next stage of electricity isn't safe. I think there are a whole, um, there are decisions that she is going to make and she is going to say that is because we are in a difficult situation financially as a result result of COVID and that is crap because we are in the situation we are in because they have not done the right thing over a very long period of time. Right. They've depended on um, unstable revenue. Um, they have, as I mentioned, privatised much of our revenue generating assets. Mm. Um, they, they have uh, failed time and time again uh, to recognise that there is a long term fiscal issue and they just haven't come up with any way to address it. You know, what they do is they announce a school here and a hospital here and a school here, and then the next election they re-announce the school and the hospital and the school there. And they think they can get away with that. Well, I mean, mission accomplished. They did. And they always do. No, I'm not going to let them get away. You're not going to let them get away with no, it? No, that's my job. That's my job. And you also Not have... just to whinge and whine. I'm not going to let them get away with it. Well, what would you... Okay, actually, I'll just go back to the privatisation point and then I'll just get back to your, like, image of New South Wales. But the constant argument that I see is every time you bring up the fact that the Liberals are privatising, I think, something along the lines of $70 billion of assets. I, I, I can't, I, it was a long time ago that I read that stat, but mm. it's something huge like that. They say... Yeah, well, New South Wales Labor privatised a bunch of stuff as well. But then you look at what they privatised. It was non-essential things. And it was like 12 billion over the span of like over a decade. Yeah, but and what they'll say is that you wanted to privatise electricity. And we didn't privatise electricity. So that, that's what they throw up all the time. And yeah? you know, we, we, we actually didn't do that. Yeah. Okay. But you know, yeah. the other, can it I just say- it, doesn't it? Can I just say the other um, issue, which is really important to me, is that all the while, while they're talking about creating jobs here, and this is uh, one of the arguments they're putting up in regard to this uh, wage cut for public service employees, so public sector employees, all the while they've been doing that, they have been shipping offshore every major transport infrastructure project. Now, imagine the jobs that would be created in New South Wales if you actually had the buses, light rail, metro, ferries, uh, just trains built here and they've destroyed the manufacturing sector and now the Premier suddenly discovered that, um, hey, we should be building stuff here in Australia. Mm. Um, mm. You know, I think that is has to be in my top five as well. I think that's been a really, um, you know, that, that has destroyed communities, it has destroyed businesses and uh, if you're talking about skills and, uh, and how you actually give young people hope, you create jobs in industries like that so they can still live in rural and regional New South Wales, yeah. still have the lifestyle they want. Not everyone wants to be here, right? Not everyone wants to be, I don't want to be working here. in the hospitality sector. You don't want to be here. <laughs> oh, Jordan. Sydney sucks. 
<laughs> no offence, it's your, it's your electric. That's because yeah. you live in the eastern suburbs. You've got to live oh, in Parramatta. Okay, all right, yeah. Well, okay. Who knows where you live? You leave the SAE bowls alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, actually, yeah, look, that was three, so maybe I should just continue the question that I asked you, I guess. What are two other things that you don't like about it? Look, I think there's also been a lack of focus on rural and regional New South Wales. I'm a country girl. I grew up in a, a small country town, two and a half thousand people. You could move there. I would love that, A little that, place actually. called yeah. Gloucester. It's really sweet. Well, there are no traffic lights. There's two and a half thousand people. Heaven. Take me there. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. But I think that they've failed to recognise the challenges in rural and regional New South Wales. Um, I'm the only Labor leader that has ever grown up in a rural area. And people always say, oh, the Labor Party is not for, uh, not for the bush. Well, you know, we're changing that because there are real struggles, particularly with young people. When I, when I grew up in Gloucester, I had to leave home to get a job. 30 years later, people still have to leave home to get a job if you live in country New South Wales yeah. because there are no jobs. And I think they've done a real disservice to the rural and regional areas of this, of this state. Mm. I can't believe it. I suppose that's just another thing of just what happens when you can just rely on getting re-elected over and over again. Yeah. The other thing is, can I just say the other, can I finish it in the top five? One of the other things I think... Make that, it quick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got as long well, as we want. Well, stop answering all my rhetorical questions. <laughs> it is half of what we've recorded so far. Um... Uh, the, one of the other things is the whole nighttime economy, right? So we actually appointed a, a, a shadow minister for that two years ago, John Graham, and he's done a terrific job. But that's about revitalising the, uh, the nighttime economy. So obviously we had the lockout laws, that's gone, but it has to be more than that as well. So, you know, live music, but not just in the city. You know, we need it in areas like Parramatta and Campbelltown and Liverpool and Cabramatta um, because not everyone wants to travel into the city. So there's a whole lot of, there's a different way of thinking I think that, um, you know, that Gladys needs to, you know, I would encourage her to do. But, um, you know, at the moment, that's, that's my job. Right. And then the other thing that I was going to add, they've decimated the public sector, right? Yeah. And yeah. if you don't have a public yeah. sector, you don't they use really have a state, do they you? They use consultants. Lots of consultants. What, what is with that? Mm. Mm. Well, look, let's go back to the public, let's go back to the powerhouse as an example, the powerhouse museum. Yeah. They've spent $38 million so far on that. Not one job created, all on consultants. And what do the consultants do? Like, what, what, what are they doing when they're talking about putting it there, of just being like, uh, I don't think it's a good idea to put it on like a swamp. And then they're just like, well, we're going to do it exactly. anyway. Exactly. It's it? a floodplain. <laughs> That's what happens when you get a consultant. You build a museum on a floodplain. Really? So the $38 million a consultant said, they're just like, you want my advice? I think you should build it there so it sinks. Well, you, it looks, have you seen it? It looks no. like a public toilet. Have you seen it? I, it no, was called a Grant, monstrosity. Flash it up. Is it? <laughs> Do that in the edit. It looks, like a, it looks like a public toilet. It's a monstrosity on stilts. It's, it's embarrassing. It's, it's, it's $1.5 billion at a time where we actually need that money. Yeah, yeah. So, well, actually, we've only got 10 minutes, sorry. Thank you for filling us in on this, and we do really appreciate your time because you've actually got people of note to talk to. The other main argument that I always get is when you're always highlighting what the Liberals are doing wrong, they always say, well, Labor's not putting forward a positive case. And the, my counter-argument every time to that is, you just don't listen to them. You just watch the little soundbite of you just on, like, seven years yeah. being like, it's not fair, it's not good, and it's terrible for New South Wales, and then just cuts out. Like, that you can't flesh out what you're trying to do for the state. Yeah, they don't want to know about it. They don't want to know. They actually don't want to know. Uh, they don't want to know about it. They get the sound bite, and that's it, and usually it's me whinging and whining. Yeah. But I do do more than whinge and whine. Yeah, but it's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I so think I if I could sum it up in a sentence, I think we have to... We have to create a vision and policies that actually make sure that everyone in New South Wales has a great life, not just some. Right. Not um, just a select few. We do have 10 minutes to go, so can we just... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you wanted it just, you know, soundbite. Didn't we talk about soundbites? <laughs> that no, no, would be no, no, my no. soundbite, yeah. that everyone in New South Wales has a great life. <laughs> Um, Dude, that's got to be your debut to TikTok as well. 
Is it? Uh, yeah, definitely. We'll put Can you that do up. a TikTok video with me after this? Yeah, I mean, all right. What do you want to do? Show the me. Macarena or something? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what Tic Tac is. Tic Tac. Tic Tac. Um, yeah, yeah, just like, uh, okay, so if, if you were Premier, what would you five be doing? Five things I would do. All right, yeah, just give it the top five. Okay. Yeah, we'll just keep it going. Yeah, we'll do the top five. <laughs> right now, I'd actually look at tax reform. Mm -hmm. So I actually think we do need to look at tax reform. We've put that on the table. We said that we're happy to look at stamp duty. We're happy to look at payroll tax. Stamp duty prevents young people from buying a home or older people just from selling a home and uh, downsizing. Stamp duty is, uh, is, uh, is a real problem in this state, so we'd, we'd look at tax reform. Um, we have to look at making sure that young people in particular have uh, stable, um, secure jobs. Uh, and I think what this COVID pandemic has, uh, has exposed is just for young people the insecure uh, nature of their employment, right? So they were first to go. They'll probably be the last to get their jobs back. So I think, you know, we, we need to focus on how we do better by young people and that's around, you'll always hear us talking about TAFE, you'll always hear us talking about how we invest in skill development, but then you also have to have the jobs. I spoke about manufacturing. I think manufacturing is, um, you know, I'll always encourage, I encourage my stepdaughter to go to university, but not everyone wants to go to university. So we've got to create jobs for people who don't necessarily want to go to university but still want secure, well-paying jobs. I think that's important. Um, climate change, we have to tackle climate change in a way like that it's never been tackled before. Mm. The government here talks about it. They will... Um, you know, they will talk about targets and, um, you know, you've got the environment minister who seems to think he's a bit of a lefty. But climate change is a real struggle for us um, and we have to be serious about that. And, and I think I can't remember, is this correct? I think New South Wales is performing the worst in building renewable energy yeah. out of all the states. Yeah. Despite the fact it's the biggest. Yeah, that's true. That's true. In fact, they have, um, you know, they have not had a focus on renewable energy. And I come back to skill development. If you're going to yeah. look at renewable energy, you actually have to look at what are the future skills in renewable energy as well. Yeah. And there's none yeah. of that work being, doing, yeah. being done. So renewable energy, the environment, climate change. Um, I also think that, um, you know, you've got to also look after our... Um, there are some, you know, in, in parts of Western Sydney, there are some people who really struggle. Mm. And they're the people that we see as a Labor Party as well. Mm. Um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in areas like Western Sydney, and I mentioned rural and regional New South Wales, um, where, you know, the um, it, it's just a real struggle, a constant struggle for people. We, we have to do better by them. Um, and we have to make sure that they have... Um, access to good education. So if you get a public education, you have to, you know, you, you, if you choose a public education, you choose it because it's the education you want, not because it's second best. Mm. That we actually have to have an education system that is the best in the world. Um, we have to have our hospitals that are staffed. This government has a focus on building hospitals when it does build a hospital, but they don't have this. It doesn't have the staff, right, to actually run the hospital. Again, no. we see that in rural areas. I think you That's guys probably more than five. But yeah, probably. Yeah. I wasn't counting. But the uh, yeah, I think you guys were the first in the country to announce nurse to patient ratios. Is that correct? Yeah. So this is about making sure that, and you know, this is the other devastating thing. This uh, pay cut is going to impact on nurses. Nurses earn eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year. Look what they've done during this whole COVID issue, right? Like they've turned up for work every day and they're cutting their pay. But um, making sure that, um, you know, you've got a certain ratio of nurses per patient yeah. and that varies depending on the ward or the, um, you know, the emergency department you're yeah. in. I mean, we'll look and at that. And that was the difference. If you guys were elected in the last election, that would have been... First of all, you wouldn't have introduced like a Trojan horse that wasn't even disguised as a horse into the state. That would have been the first point. What? The, 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 the Ruby Princess. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Damn, New South Wales Labor taking a strong stance against the Trojan horse the Trojan of Troy. Horse. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, it's like clearly a disease ridden ship. Like, if you were the king of Troy, I fully understand it. It was just like a gift that was allowed in, but she was just like, oh, okay, so that's just filled with the plague. Yeah, okay, yeah, just send that in. That's fine. Good decision. But then there was like that, and then, like, if you guys were elected, this is the thing that we've been thinking about a lot, Christo and I. You guys would have had a nurse to patient ratio in there. It's a tough enough job being a nurse without having to deal with a global pandemic. 
and then being yeah. overworked. Mm. On top of that, you know, they were overworked without the pandemic. Mm. So it's just all of these things would have just been handled way better and it's just, the, it's just the efficiency of running a state which would have meant that there would have been less of an outbreak in Australia to begin with if you guys were in power. That's what I'm going to say. The point you're making, yeah. I think, uh, <laughs> is that you need hospitals that are well staffed so that if there is a pandemic, you're able to deal with it in yeah. the right way yeah. that makes sure people are healthy. Yeah. And also you just need well staffed hospitals yeah. regardless. Yeah, you do. You need hospitals that are staffed. Yeah. I mentioned rural and regional New South Wales. They, they, they have hospitals that, uh, you know, th even though there's a hospital there, they still have to travel long distances just to get, you know, ICU, tr uh, just to get, not even ICU treatment, just to get treatment. Yeah. So it's a, it's a pretty um, difficult situation if you're in those regional areas. And yeah. I keep coming back to that, Jordan, because there's so much inequality in this state. It's not just inequality in regard to where you live, whether you live in the eastern suburbs or whether you live in Western Sydney, um, there is inequality in regional New South Wales versus metropolitan New South yeah, Wales. Yeah. Like when I say everyone, you know, my little soundbite, everyone deserves to have a great life in New South Wales, they do. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much money you have, the, the language you speak, um, it doesn't matter where you live, it, it doesn't matter the, the religion you practice, everyone deserves to feel welcome here and to have a great life. Right. Well, I guess we'll just end it on that. The, the sound. <laughs> but that's shout pretty much it. Huh? Shout out oh, shout out to the pub. Um, what's it called? Albion Hotel. Albion Hotel. Thank you so much. Yeah, but the and, problem uh, is the Albion Hotel is currently serving just water. Yeah. Right. That's all we've got, right? Yeah. Water. And we're their only customers, and uh, we didn't pay for it. But they do open next week, so go to the Albion Hotel. Yeah. It seems like it'd be going off if there was actually people here. Um, thank you so much for your time. Like, yeah, I just, I really need to go to the toilet. So. Just Please share and comment below. Command.